What is up, y'all? This is JT. This is the Bauer 1 and 1 8 inch SDS variable speed pro rotary hammer. It's not pro by any means, but it does get the job done. As you can see, it's already beat up. This is model 1641E-B, and it says 0 to 800 RPMs. And if you haven't had this exact model yet so you haven't bought it yet here's your uh, dial and I got this act this idea from a youtuber that came on to my video uh, for a review on this and he told me about the potentiometer and how there's a little dial on it well if you put it all the way down into first speed I can see if I'm in this is plugged in by the way so I might shock myself but anyways it's in first speed and if you notice from the factory from the factory or from the store or whatever they don't move that they don't even do that well what you can do is find yourself a very tiny blade screwdriver you can use a tiny little bit like this and without even switching the switch let's see if I can get this in film there's a little turn knob and just turning it a little bit I just barely turned it still in first speed so now we don't want that we don't want it to uh, over overdo the motor so we'll turn it back a hair still pretty quick I mean if you're wanting it in one you're gonna want a lot of control so we'll just put it there Okay, I'd say if you were doing some really fine work, that'd be perfect, but I want just a hair more. I mean, literally a hair. I'm gonna call that good. We're gonna assemble it back together, and that just requires sliding this dial back into its little slots. Yeah, I know I didn't show taking it apart, but I didn't know if this was actually going to work or not because I've never had this tool apart. But then uh, basically all you do is grab the other side of your handle, and this is kind of how the... It's kind of got this ghetto sort of a shock system on there. It doesn't really do much. It's not like the other tools where, where this actually bounces back and forth. There's really not two, there's one rubber bushing up here at the top. And this kind of just sits on this little bolt. You can kind of see how that's put together. So if this bolt doesn't really move, which it doesn't seem to anyway. No, it doesn't really seem to move at all. Then that basically doesn't do anything. So the only Basically, the only part that would move is just whatever spacing is in between these parts. And as you can see, it started to partially damage that already. You can see the wear marks right in here. And this may actually cause a failure later on. Let's check the other side. Yeah, it's actually damaging the plastic. Come on, focus. There you go, you can see the damaging of the plastic. That's similar to what you're gonna get on impact sockets and that's why a lot of times I don't use impact sockets over, over thick walled Craftsman, just chrome vanadium nice sockets because they don't actually, they don't damage. Like you're less likely to strip a bolt out unless you're using impact sockets because they're soft. They are made specifically to be soft. And that's not a good thing on this. This is gonna be the wear points on that.
this machine. But that's that. I'll just go grab the other half and throw it together just so you can see how easy it is. And by the way, shout out real quick to my rigid light. This is the uh, triway fold. It'll actually do 360 a light. And it will actually light a whole room. But I'll do a review on that later. And it swivels, it's got a stand. You can put it up on a stand. So pretty much make sure all your switches and dials and everything are lined up. There's like a little boot here, this trigger here. And while you're at it, and you're safety conscious, don't forget to pull the plug out. But this will be the exact opposite. Of course, I put the cord right in the way. This will be the exact opposite of taking it apart. And remember, you do have to line it up with those pieces up here in the front. So they have to specifically line up, which I can't get at the moment. There we go. There we go. Easy as can be. May have had the boot slide out a little bit. Or the screws are actually holding it out. And then always put your impact in one. Never drive these too hard. And try not to strip them everybody's like what do you need speed one for and this is exactly why I love speed one as you can see it's pulling it together nicely this one I can't reach all the way down so I gotta grab my drill and I've got the clutch set on it so who knows what there's like a hundred million settings well, that seems good enough. I can test it with a hand screwdriver, which is what I usually do is I go back and I hand tighten all these to make sure that they're tight. But that's it. I mean, that's is. So now this dial, when it's all the way on one, let's plug it back in really quick. This video got long. And that's still on just one all the way down. If we just put that on two, let's go all the way up. It actually clicks when it goes all the way up into six. So now, because we turned the potentiometer up, what it was running at six when I was running at full speed is a little bit too fast. I would actually turn it down more and use it that way because what I, all I was doing was chiseling mortar that was in between the bricks. I wasn't actually breaking the bricks. And also the faster you run it, then the more you're gonna have to oil this little, this little mechanism. And that seems to be it, I think. Thank you for watching and if there's any questions, uh, I would still buy this. I got it at like 60 bucks, I think. I think it was around 60 bucks. I had a coupon and it was on sale for something. I'm not even sure. Decent tool. I would never buy a battery one of these ever, even though I did want the rigid ones. But you'd have to have like a 12 amp hour battery for that to be worth a shit. So we're going to dim the lights on you. Oh, by the way, this thing dims. Review on this, coming up.